Could you have us believe, Mr. Erstazen, that the people who died while you were active in the townships were not murdered? I was not at any one moment performing my own acts of my own free will. Would you not agree, sir, that innocent blood was shed at your hands? Well, sir, um, I do believe, sir, that um, I'm aware that the death, there was much death, sir, and um, I'm aware that uh, people died, and sometimes without the, as we've heard before, sir, that... Um, Did you not kill in cold blood, sir? As I said, I'm, I'm very sorry for what I've done, and I'm applying for amnesty, and that is all I have to say. Moses? Oh, it's too early, Uncle. Ah. It's time to go, Moses. Don't forget. Okay, comrade. No, 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 no. Perhaps you can read me something from your book later. 
I don't think you'd be interested. Uh -huh. I'm always interested. But in things you agree with. Come, let's go, Uncle. My dear Celeste. Get it, my friend. <laughs> Our friends from America. Yes, nice to meet you. My name is Cheryl Brown. Thank nice you. to meet you. Good to meet you, Gino. Jake Palastro. How are you? We've been expecting you. Glad you could make it. Oh, well, thank you. And we understand that you're expecting a large crowd this evening. We do have that expectation. Oh, yes. great. Thank you. of Chris Hani has confirmed the fears of many that peaceful change is no longer possible in South Africa. While polls indicate that Nelson Mandela will win the general election, the looming concern is whether or not that election can even take place. And yet, while violence seems to spiral out of control in South Africa, there are other stories to be told. Stories of a gentler, more hopeful sort. Like this one here in Longa Township, where whites and blacks are gathering together in good faith here tonight to take a stand for brotherly love. Who Moses? Moses, who I am going to ask you, but here's a later. Then it's a joke. So, so long as this is in those old islands, I'm a boy. Because the change system, it's been a band to have a good leg there. I have a friend I have to meet. I'll be right back. You can never see. Thank you all. Moses, what a pleasant surprise. I'm so glad you could make it. I just needed to help my uncle find a seat, that's all. Oh, there's plenty of room, Moses. Room for you too. Who's he? The white one with the beard. Karen Wolfhardt is our main speaker tonight. You shouldn't have told him that, Pastor. Moses has no time to listen to white folks. Maybe tonight it will be different. Mo, what's made you change your mind? Nothing has changed my mind, Uncle. Nothing at all. That's all you need to know for now. And when I see petrol bombs, when I check the zonki in and see the AK is Okay. Okay. Right. Amata Kadayu Tiko Kapelingangi Namakaba Tiko Yehova went langa senzelinge. God, your word says. If we humble ourselves and pray, and turn from our wickedness, you will hear us in heaven and heal our land. Amen. Amen. 
The man you're going to hear from tonight has a very special place in my heart. Our relationship hasn't always been as friendly as it is now, but I will let him tell you the story. Please, Gerrit, come. My father was a well digger from the Eastern Cape. He was 60 years old when I was born. My grandfather was a commando, a freedom fighter in the Boer War. I suppose it's true, the old saying, the child is father to the man. And in my case, that is most certainly true. However, in life, we have a chance to be born again. I'd like to read from the scriptures, from the book of Acts, chapter 9. This has to do with the conversion of Saul. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, Suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? take the hand of the person next to us and join our hearts in prayer. Jay, can you go ahead and cover this? Credit, and get a good mix of hands. Lord. Hello? Hello, Cheryl. This is Freddy. I'm back at the hotel. I've just gotten a call that security forces are blocking off Monga Township. There's some kind of violence. <laughs> Who are you working for? 
I said, who are you working for? No more grabbing from the pool. No more running to do evil. Cheers, Annie. Now I'm happy to. I beg you, don't make some rumors. Call us, sir. Call us, sir. Get second to hello. Call me and I'll happy to. Don't forget, hello. Don't forget, mad.
Gerrit? I can only hand this man over to the proper authorities, not in Inani. And now you are the problem going to get I'm only going to do that. Go and call the police. Gerrit? Will he go peacefully? I don't know. have had someone dead. Gerrit, put this thing away before someone really gets hurt. Let me speak to them. Let me talk to them. Pantuanabam, we cannot give you the white man you want. He must be surrendered to the proper authorities. We are the authorities in this town. Even if he's done a tenth of what you said he did, let the police take him. Let him rot in jail. They will hang him. That's too good for him. Brothers and sisters, you know me. I know you all. You are freedom fighters, not criminals. I've been with you through thick and thin. You can wash up. Oh, three, you were christened in this church. 
If you kill this white man, that will be murder. Let the law take its course. Fundis, this is not about you. We want the man inside. I'm the man you want. He's not. He's not. We're not stupid. We know you white people don't look the same. He's not the one you want. No, no, no. I am the man you want. But you must let me explain. Please listen to what I want to say. Gino! You still want revenge. Gino, come back here! Excuse me. Are you from the States? San Diego, California. No one here is seeking revenge. We only want justice. In that case, let us all talk, and then you go home! You want to get cut? Seems nobody wants to go home, Fundis. You might as well invite us into the church. Nothing will please me more. For 15 years, I've been trying to get you inside this church. Fine, but there's a condition. We want to hear the settler preach, not you. No, if we like what he says, we might just take up an offering. Well, I have one condition too. No weapons inside my church. And remember, God is watching you. Come in. Ninety-three years ago, an African freedom fighter was executed by the English oppressors about a thousand miles north of here in a place called Middleburg. His name was Peter Jacobus Wolfer. He was my grandfather. My father took me on several occasions to the place where my grandfather had been shot. It was during the time of the Boer War. Peter Jacobus Wolfart had been leader of a band of Cape rebels, Boer freedom fighters resisting the British military advance against the Afrikaner republics to the north. He and his men were guerrilla fighters, blowing up train tracks and telegraph lines. According to my father, my grandfather had been a fierce fighter. There was evidence at his trial that he had killed a number of British soldiers in hand-to-hand -hand combat before he was himself wounded and captured. To the British, he was a traitor to Queen Victoria. To my family and the Afrikaner people, he was a hero. Section halt. Sergeant. Right. Turn. Quick march. Yeah. 
Sehr schön, hopp! By the mark, hold the line. Ready? I see what it's going to Aim! Veilig in the Heere's hand. Father's tribute typically covered a lot of ground, but never varied in at least two details. One was that my grandfather had laid down his life for the truth. And second, that I must prepare myself to make an equal sacrifice, should it ever become necessary. Thus the question arose at an early age. What is truth? There were different truths to consider, or should I say, to live by. There was the truth of the English-speaking whites. They were not to be trusted and humiliated whenever possible. Playing rugby against the English schoolboys gave me a chance to set things right. Then there were the sacred truths. Among them, that the Afrikaner nation comprised the new chosen people of God. That the Jews had lost that distinction because they had crucified Jesus Christ. The blacks, of course, were all around us. They were considered inferior beings. I was taught that they had been cursed by God. At night, my mother would stay up late boiling pots of water to throw on the blacks just in case they launched an uprising. United States President Richard Nixon stopped in Salzburg, Austria last night on his way to the Middle East, declaring he is on a mission for peace for the entire world. Back home, however, controversy continues to swirl around Mr. Nixon in the Watergate burglary. Attorneys for former presidential advisor John Ehrlichman. When the same water had cooled by morning, it was often used to bathe my grandmother's gnarled feet. She suffered from arthritis. What makes you think anyone wants to listen to these nursery rhymes from your childhood? What I want to know is what makes you responsible for last night? Who killed my sister's baby? Was it you? That's all I want to know. <laughs> We are here to get to the truth. Let the settler finish his story. Und um dieses 
Volk, wollen wir regen und wollen wir kämpfen und niemals erlahmen und niemals ermüden und niemals verzagen und niemals verzweifeln. Hitler's problem, or so he claimed, was with the Jews. I didn't know many Jews, but when you hate one group of people, it's not hard to hate others. I'd grown up hating the British and fearing the blacks. Mein Kampf, Hitler's autobiography, put it all in perspective. There was a master race meant to rule the world, but our dominion wouldn't come without a fight. That was fine with me. I enjoyed a good fight. Okay, we'll let you follow back, Come. Come on. Mora, pass your passport. You will police on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come, Jan. We are going to get Come, drink up, drink up, drink up. Uh, man's gotta keep his wits about him. Good project, come. Yeah. He was just telling me how the box will never beat the Aussies. You see, right there, he shows he's got no wits to begin with. I was saying, the difference is the box need to fly if it can kick, that's all. Hey, who side you on, man? Uh, it calls me off. I can't even believe it, Jan. I can't help overhearing your conversation. I agree with your friend there. The Aussies are better players because all their kids have been playing it from the day they were born. Yeah, it's because they got nothing better to do, eh? <laughs> Listen, seriously, seriously. We need to get our people involved in the game at a much younger age, especially the blacks, sir, because they're such good athletes, sir. You want to see a good flower? I saw this black oak play the other day. He could kick a ball like 50 meters in the air and still run under it and catch it. It was brilliant, man. Oh, they've got no right playing the game. What do you mean? I mean, they've got no right playing the game. Tobias should have been shot before he was allowed anywhere near the rugby yeah. field, man. I'm just saying they're good athletes as well. Yeah, well, they're great athletes in the same way that an animal is a great athlete, the same way that an antelope is a great athlete. The blacks are all bloody animals, man. Rugby is a thinking man's game, man. They're thinking, man. Black can't think for themselves. They're stupid, man. And they've they got to keep, keep them out of everything, civilization and everything, man. It didn't mean anything. Ah, oh, shut up, man. Now, maybe not. But it's talk like that that's got us in the mess we're in. What do you mean? I mean, we're busy losing this country to a black cancer, to a bloody group that's been cursed by God himself. The blacks outnumber us six to one. You do the sons. But what, does that make them worthy of anything? Because there's a lot of them. All they're doing is contaminating this country. The one our forefathers had to die for at the hands of the English. These blacks, man. They breed like animals. 
and overpopulation requires natural selection, survival of the fittest. We must intervene like any other species would do to ensure its own survival. It's the will of God. So what do you say the answer is then? We can't just deny they're here. We can't just ignore them by the millions. <laughs> Listen, man. Might is right. If our government can't control these blacks, then we form our own resistance movement. We've already put a group together, a youth party that will do something about it. And eliminate the problem right where it starts, eh? Cheers, pal. Take care. Have a look at this one. The Friedrich Nietzsche. The German philosopher. Very interesting reading. The will to power. Uh -huh. Every high degree of power involves a corresponding degree of freedom from good and evil. Sounds like Mein Kampf. Yep. Shall we go for a walk? I've kept those photographs with me all my life. They held a trial in the town square, and then they marched him off to the outskirts where they made him sit on a chair. But he refused to blindfold. For him to have been your grandfather, your dad must have been quite old when he married. Or at least quite old when you were born. He was 60. <laughs> Still had it in him, eh? You said something the other night at the bar, something about getting to the source of the problem. Yes, sir. Tell me what you had in mind. Well, sir, honestly, I feel I've reached an end. Ambrose, conclusion. not that tree. Down there, yeah. You know, Gerrit, if only the blacks could understand that apartheid is in their own best interest. It's the Jews, of course, who are really to blame. The Jews? Well, it was the same in Hitler's time. He never achieved his primary objective. He liquidated masses, but he let the money men slip away. The Jewish money men. They are the enemy you don't see behind the enemy you do see. This goes much deeper than you can imagine, Gerrit. But we'll deal with them too, you'll see. It's all part of God's design. What are you studying at university? Law. Excellent. That's how I entered politics. <laughs> really? Yeah. You know, Gerrit, I see great things for you in your future. The logical next step would be the Reiterwach, and then, of course, the Bruderbund. I come from a poor family, Mr. Gerber. There's never been anybody I'm in Bruderbund, my family. I'm Bruderbund, Gerrit. Yet. I'm an older man. I have time to listen to the heart of a young man. Come. Tell me your dreams. Destiny grants us our wishes. It's all been arranged. Get in the front. Colonel, meet Gerrit Wolfhart. Mr. Wolfhart. Sir. Please take a seat. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You come highly recommended. Mr. Gerber here has been a close personal friend for many years. We've known about your youth party, of course, for quite a while. I haven't had time myself to read through all the information, but I believe uh, you have a plan, a bold plan for the future. Tell me about it. The final solution, sir. Final solution? For the Jews? For the blacks? I've often thought about ways to get to what we all want. Yes? Well, it's simple, really. We lager them in. Lager them in. 
The same as in the Battle of Blood River. But instead of keeping the enemy out with our wagons, we keep the enemy in. Soweto, Mlazi, Sharpville. These townships are all far removed from the white neighborhoods, built miles away. Well, that was done deliberately. Providentially, in my opinion, sir. We launched commando-style raids in strategic areas in the country, for which black radicals get blamed. We also raid the townships and stir up tribal hostilities among the blacks. The Zulus blame the Khorsas for their troubles. The Khorsas blame the Zulus. <laughs> the whites blame everyone. So the country is stirred up into a fever, a frenzy. Desperate measures are called for. You declare a national state of emergency. Expel all these foreign journalists for weeks, maybe months. Can't do that. There'll be repercussions. Yes, but with enough people in the right positions. I mean, you know better than I how to plan this. It can be done. Carry on, Gerard. Then, the military lagers in all the blacks with armored vehicles and saturate bombs the townships, one by one. The white population doesn't even have to know what's happening. And even if they find out, we clamp down on them too. In the end, they'll be grateful for what we've done. A new South Africa, just as God intended. What happens when the borders are reopened? When the borders are reopened, we explain that the blacks have all moved away. All moved away? Exactly. They left the country during a state of emergency, crossed the border in the middle of the night. Call it a diaspora, if you like. Tribes have done that before. I mean, the international community doesn't give a damn about Africa. This is our country, and we're already being despised. In a generation from now, when this is over, it'll all be forgotten. Very interesting, Gareth. I can see Mr. Gerber hasn't exaggerated his opinion of you. Thank you, sir. There are men, prominent men, both in and out of the military and the government, who share our view. As Hans knows, we are looking for young men with vision, men like yourself, to carry these views forward. Well, stay in touch. Thank you, sir. God will see you to the car, Harrod. I'll catch up with you later. Colonel, Mr. Gerber, sir, I love my country. I'm willing to lay down my life for the truth. I won't let you down. We know you won't, Gerard. We came here to
to listen to one settler. Edward, you promised me you're going to listen. You promised to show respect. This is Herod's wife. Mweni. My name is Celeste. I knew Herod when he was filled with hate. And I know Herod now. I wasn't raised like him. My father was in the army. But he was nothing like the men that Herod just described. Elsa, hi. Hi. Have you met her? No. When I first met Gerrit, it was at the birthday party of a friend from school. Gerrit quite enjoyed being the center of attention. He came to the party because my friend's mother had him in mind for her daughter. Maybe. Excuse me, Mrs. Ack. He was very charming. Had a way of speaking that drew you in. At the same time, my parents had taught me well. For all his good looks, it was obvious that Herod was from the, the other side of the tracks. I had been warned to steer clear of young men like him. But really, it's a wonderful book. Once you start, you're not going to be able to put it down. I just hope so. Having a discussion on literature, are we? Hi, I'm Herod. Mersha and Yakulis. Hello. Hi. Hi. Would you like some punch? Uh, yes, thank you. Yeah. How's it, man? Where's Gerrit? It's all about a half hour ago. Well, didn't he help you with the flyers? No. Why not? He said he had an English class to go to. What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? Well, I mean, Gerrit doesn't take English. Oh, yeah. I think the girl does that. We've got to do something about these flyers. They look like someone did them by hand. We did do it by hand. When Khara discovered that we both attended the same university, there was no getting rid of him. Well Not done. that I entirely minded either, but I had no idea at the time just how deeply committed he was to his notions of white supremacy. Each man lost his son? Correct. Jarvis is like the other side of the coin. Interesting. Let's pursue that, the other side of the coin. Tell me more. You were saying something, Mr. Um, Wolfa. Gerrit Wolfa. Wolf, Wolf, Wolf. You're an exchange student, sir. Oh, I see. Uh, have you had a chance to read the book? The book? Cry the Beloved Country. <laughs> I beg your pardon, Mr. Wolfard. Uh, I would just like to remind you that we are conducting this class in English and not in Afrikaans. Oh, yeah, you think your is dumb, eh? I can't read that book. Why not? Well, for one, I don't have a copy. See, well, perhaps someone would be kind enough to share his copy with uh, Mr. Volfard until he has a chance by his own. No, I don't bother. Thank you, Celeste. Now then, let's take up on this thought of uh, Kamalo and Jarvis, men of different race, but drawn together through fate and the common bond of humanity. And now we'll carry on where we left off uh, while I read to you. What are you doing in there? <laughs> I thought you were never coming out. Next time, try to stay until the class is over. Listen, I, I just wanted to say thank you for sharing your book with me. Are you going to get your own copy? Well... I didn't think so. What does he expect from me? I'm to verstaan. I'm an Afrikaan. So am I. And a pretty one at that. Hey! 
examine it. The book is communist propaganda. Everybody knows that. It's written by Alan Payton, not Karl Marx. Different author, same subject, if you ask me. How do you know what it's about when you haven't even read it? I don't need to read it. Because? Because I know what it's about. Well? Well, what? <laughs> well, what is it about? Ugh, the race issue, you know. How we should feel sorry for the blacks and all whites are evil, all that nonsense. Another twisted perspective. And you haven't read it? No, I haven't read it. I really don't know who... who you think you are, Mr. Bullfight, but... if you have any desire at all to know the truth... not to mention past the class... I suggest you read the book. Why don't you... Test your ideas in the marketplace of real thinkers. Find out what it is you really believe. I know what I believe. And don't lose it. I want it back. It wasn't easy for him. Alan Payton, the author, had been a political exile and represented everything Gerrit had been taught to hate and fear. Who can say what finally led him to turn to the first page? There's a lovely road that runs from Point to the hills. These hills are grass-covered and rolling, and they are lovely beyond any singing of it. The road climbs seven miles into them. I thought about him when I went to bed that night. There was something there, something in his eyes. And it wasn't just anger that I saw. I thought about the passage in the book that talked about the one hope Alan Payton saw for our country. White men and black men desiring neither power nor money, but only the good of their country, coming together to work for it. I thought that perhaps, just maybe, Herod could be one of those men. No, I didn't think about it. I prayed for it. Oh, nothing, just a law book. Pride of Love and Country. That's one of my favorites. How far have you gotten? Just a few pages, that's all. I need to have it back, you know. Well, yeah, take it. When you finish. Chad, this is Gerrit Wolfart. It's a pleasure. Chad Furi. Hey, why doesn't Gerrit come with us? <laughs> I don't know. Why not? Where are you going? We're going for a drive in the country. Oh, that's nice. Well, it's not really the country. But uh, you can come along if you like. Yeah, join us.
Hey, what are you doing? There must be another way around the township. We're not going around, we're going into it. But you said we were going for a drive I in the country. I said we're going for a drive in the country. I didn't say where we're going to end up. We're going to visit some friends of ours who live here. Which friends? We were with a group called Quinonia. Have you heard of it? The pastor of the church we're going to is one of the leaders on a national level. His church has become an example of what whites and blacks can do working together. Just one big happy family, eh? We're always looking for volunteers. Keep looking. <laughs> Chad. Pastor Lakota. It's good to see you. See you inside. Ah, Celeste. Pastor Lakota. It's good to see you again. <laughs> the children are expecting you. I'd like you to meet Gerrit. Hi. Gerrit, get out of the car. You're being childish. A pleasure, Gerrit. Gerrit is a law student. Excellent. We need more educated people these days. He's a... Uh, Still working on his manners, though. Well, it's good to see you here, Harry. Is he here? Of course. Stirring up more trouble, no doubt. <laughs> there he is. Tando! Salist! Bola, Tando. Harry, this is Tando. Hi. What did you do to your head? Tell her what happened, Tando. <laughs> He collided with the goat head on. <laughs> Who are playing? Uh huh. <laughs> That's all right, Tando. I'll play with you. Come. <laughs> Tando's absolutely fearless. I don't know whether that's good or bad for him. What's he doing here? All the children at the church are orphans. His parents were killed a while ago. They were in a taxi one night and. Got caught in a crossfire between Zulus and Khorzas. Black on black violence happens all the time. <laughs> Come on, I have a class to teach. Now that we've done the alphabet, I'm gonna hand out the pictures that you had to make of your favorite person. And then I want you to tell me who it is. Right, whose picture is this? And who's that? Auntie. Your auntie. Well done. Beautiful. Oh, look at this. Whose picture is this? Lovely. Well done. Oh, and look at this lovely one. Who's that? Friend. Your friend. Lovely. Take your picture. Well done. Okay, and look at this beautiful picture. Who did this? Tando. And who's that? You. Me. Thank you so much, Tando. It's beautiful. Okay, and whose picture is this? Yours. Who's that? Your aunt. That's beautiful. Good You're not helping Celeste teach? No. Come. Let me show you around. Celeste is a wonderful teacher. I'm sure she is. You can see it comes easily to her. It shines in everything she does. There is nothing more natural than love. You disagree? It seems to me, Celeste should be using her talents among her own people. There are a lot of white children that need the same thing. All children need to be taught. But there are things that God meant to be separate. From one blood, God made all nations. From one blood? What? what? What are you talking about? That's what the Bible says. But this is different. How is it different? Whites must look after whites. Are you sure about that? Of course. Yet against the English, you fought a war. What are you trying to say? Look around you, Herod. Look into the faces of the people around here. Of those children in that classroom. No one here is your enemy. Why do you fear us? Fear you? <laughs> That's not what I was talking about. I'm not afraid. And anyway, how can you read a face that doesn't even have a soul? Doesn't have a soul? Cursed and soulless will they be. 
a servant of servants unto their brethren. And where did you hear that? Oh, you don't know. It's in the Bible. Is it? I didn't know that. Can you show me where that is? Genesis somewhere. Probably further on in the New Testament. Matthew. Well, I can't seem to find it right now. Perhaps later. Yeah, I'd better get back to Celeste. Harriet, you are always welcome here. Have a nice day. For Gerrit, there could be no breaking with the past, apart from seeing that past in a different way. He was an African of the White Tribe, tied to the land and history, like the great baobab trees tied to its native soil. He didn't live alone, or stand alone, but his loyalties, his memories, his very identity were all interwoven with the traditions of his forefathers. He had never before questioned their validity. And now, his own doubts, the enemy within, threatened to rob the magic and law of his race. As for me, I held the notion that change is natural, inevitable. I saw Herod as a work in progress. Sneaking up on me. <laughs> Can we talk? Sure. What is it, Herod? What's the matter? Celeste. I really like you. A lot. It's just there's a... There's a lot of things about me that you don't know. Well, I could say the same thing, Herod. We just getting to know each other. Yes, I know, I know. But there's a lot of things about me that I, I don't want you to know. I can't tell you about. What do you mean? Well, I'm committed to things. I'm doing things that might be wrong, but I'm not prepared to change them. It's just that this will, this will never work. Maybe you're right, Carrot. Maybe we'll never see each other again, but... There's, there's one thing I'm sure about. You will change. You already have.
And next? Nothing. Hey, that Ike wants to see you, eh? What a bull guy from the bar. Kojak. Mr. Kojak to you. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, yourself, big hey. boy. We've already assigned someone to him. That one. He needs attending to. Why him? He's a troublemaker. Peacemaker, actually. Suppose it makes him more dangerous. Stirring up strife with this reconciliation business. Well, is he really so dangerous? Nah, he's just another thorn in the flesh that needs to be removed. Sending out the wrong message. We thought to launch a raid against his church. You know, that interracial black and white prayer meeting thing. But it's probably not the way to go. Too big a scale, too many people involved. Could easily backfire. So? Well, we keep it simple. He's going to a white neighborhood a week from Saturday night for a prayer meeting. It's a friendly neighborhood, no security to speak of. It should be simple. It's just him. Just him. Other assignments are being carried out around the country. This is your chance. Did you know I was there? Where? The township where he lives. I know him. Really? You know, it might make things more difficult for you if you know him. Or make me stronger? Yeah. So you don't see any problem? No. I don't see any problems. Keep this. They all look so much alike. I want to make sure you get the right one. By the way, what does it say in the Bible that the blacks will never go to heaven? What? You know, where does it say that they have no souls, that they can't go to heaven? Oh, several books written, I know. No, 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 in the Bible. What does it say that in the Bible? It's in there somewhere. And if it isn't? Would it matter? The Bible? Yes. Any particular translation? No, no, just the Bible. Right. And if I want to find a passage in it, um, is there, I don't know, an index or a table of contents? You mean to find specific scriptures? Right. But for that, you'll need a concordance. You look for the keyword that you want in the concordance, and it'll tell you where to find it in the Bible. It's in that section over there. Thank you.
There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. For he is our peace, who has made us both one, and has broken down the dividing wall of hostility, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby bringing the hostility to an end. From one blood has he made all nations. Celeste, dear, do you mind? I need some help with the team. Sure. Excuse me, Pat. All right, everybody, pull up a chair. Let's uh, gather together, get this prayer meeting on the road, and uh, we'll start off with some singing, all right? Pastor, you come and take a seat right here. Thank you. Come in, come in. We're just getting started. Please. I don't think we've uh, met before. Jim Bowden. You have a hard time finding the place. What's your name? Gerrit. Gerrit. Welcome, Gerrit.
Hi everyone, this is uh, Herod, he's a new guest. Hi, Hi Herod. Herod. Yeah, have my seat. There you go. Hi, Herod. I almost shot you. Where's my, where's my grandfather? My grandfather was here. <laughs> I almost shot you. Bravo. 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 I congratulate you. You have finally made it, being forgiven by God, and all is right with the world. Mo, well, what's going on? Oh, nothing much, <coughs> Uncle. Just a couple of whiteys on center stage again, making a fuss over seeing the light. It seems we are all here to tell stories. Well, I have a story to tell. My birthday wasn't registered to the Department of Native Affairs. When I got older, finding work was impossible because I had no passbook. Okay. You, you've got papers, right? No. Listen, you have to keep trying. Without an ID, you can't do anything. I know that. Get that ID and come back and see me. I'll have something for you then. Thanks. Okay. Take care. You're a bright young man. Don't give up. Hey, fire, you look up. Is blunt or what? Excuse me. Hey, stop it, man. What are you doing? You stay out of here. It was an accident. Shut, Shut up, too, boy. You bloody gaffer. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> When I came to later, that Jewish shopkeeper was washing the blood from my face. He wanted me to go to the hospital, but I left. I made my way home again. My mother was still alive then. So was my sister. It's fast curfew. It's death! It's Mother Ogly has killed! That no white man will have the privilege! I will do it myself! No! no. What happened to my son? I don't know. What happened? What is this? Moses, what's the control point? Let's get him inside. Let's get him inside. Come on.
How do you know it was a white man? Because I went to the city today to look for work. Oh. Wonder what happened. No! Come back. Dim, dim, dim. Relax, relax. Relax, relax. I know how you feel. You want to do to him what he did to you, but you don't know how to get back. Listen, there is a way. Do you hear me? Was he white? Never forget his face. Engrave it in your memory, in your gut. When you recover, and you will recover, that face will be your guide. It will take you to a place of freedom, a place where you will control and rule your own destiny. The whites have tried to control you, Mo, but they've only set you free. Do you hear me? You're free. I never thought I would see that face again. Not until today. How old were you at the time? I was 17. <laughs> you told us you were looking for a job, but weren't you in school or? I dropped out of school. And you said your sister died. Tell us what happened. There was a raid. The security forces and the soldiers broke our door. They were looking for weapons, and they couldn't find anything. They went for my sister. They raped her, one by one. Then they killed her. And what about your mother? She died from a heart attack. You said that you, you dropped out of school. Was it because of all the violence that was going on at the time, or? No, I didn't have money to pay for school fees. School fees? He didn't have the money to pay to go to school. I mean, wasn't there some kind of law? There was a law, right? There were many laws, apartheid laws, laws of oppression, 317 laws. Shall I quote them for you, or tell you how they work? Tell them. Forced removal of black people from their land. Detention without trial. Torture at the hands of the police. Our leaders dying mysteriously in jail. Falling on their knife while cutting bread. Is that believable to you? He's yeah. twisting the facts to suit his own money. I swear on money. The black man will never be equal to the white man. Man, shut up, man. You don't want to us anymore. If it wasn't for the white South Africa, your black comrades in the rest of this country would be lying in the street, dying of starvation. This is our holy land. We own this place. Come here! Come here! Come here. Come here. Come here. That's it. We got you now. You're going nowhere. You go to the police station. Call the police. You got him. Here. Time with this and take him back to where he I is. want to speak to my lawyer. Well, yes, I know my life. Moses. Moses. I can't change the past. I can't change the things that I've done to you. But I can ask your forgiveness. You don't have to forgive me. But I hope you will. 
Moses, if we do not forgive, then God cannot forgive us. Forgiving you won't take away this scar. It won't bring back my sister. I know. And I'm sorry, Moses. I'm sorry about all these things. Will you give me a chance to set things right? Audrey, Sipo, come, let's go. It's a beginning, Moses. A new beginning. Reconciliation is the only way for us in this country. I hear you, Pastor. I hear you. You know, Jesus was definitely not a white man. Then again, he wasn't a black man either. Probably looked like a colored man. Being from the Middle East, those people are brown. But he wasn't a white man. Take it one day at a time. One step at a time. The elections of 1994 did take place, and peacefully at that. Nelson Mandela became the first democratically elected president in South African history. In the years that have followed, many have prophesied doom for our new country. I hold a different view. I believe that when people recognize their sins and repent, when forgiveness is asked for and forgiveness given, then miracles can and will occur. That is why I have hope for my country. And that is why I say, Kosi Sigelela i Africa. God bless Africa always.